what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I'm back here at Tampa Honda, and we're gonna do a comparison that I know a lot of you have actually been asking me for. We're gonna compare the two big SUVs in Honda's lineup. We have the all new return back again, 2019 Honda Passport, which we've already reviewed on Rady's Rides, and I'll put that at the end of this video. And we have the refreshed for 2019 Honda Pilot. So let's talk a little bit about SUVs. SUVs, that segment is growing more and more each and every day here in the United States. And Honda has decided, you know what? We need to increase some of the flexibility in our lineup. They're very well-selling Honda CRV, such a hit, needed some extra, I don't know, companionship, I guess. And that's why they decided after so long to bring back the Honda Passport. Now, the Honda Pilot, being that full-size SUV, has gotten a little bit minivan-like over the years. But what Honda has promised and what Honda has delivered is a refresh to kind of drag it back into the SUV scene. So let's go ahead and dive in to these two SUVs. We're gonna actually start with the Pilot since that one is a refresh. This design has been around since 2016, redesigned for this year. You can see how Honda is getting a little bit more aggressive on the front end. I do like the way the headlights are styled with the LED marker lights and how it just flows into that front chrome grille area. I like the way Honda sprinkles a little bit of different material touches. You have the shiny chrome, and then you have just a little bit of gloss black. Probably my favorite thing about the 2019 Honda Pilot has gotta be what they're doing over here. So they have some nice flat black ABS plastic. You have some very stylish that are also gonna be functional fog lamps, and then just a tad of chrome to kind of blend in the top part, part of the front fascia with this lower part. As you go across, you can see it has more of that SUV look with the silver painted here, flat black grille, and just really has a more aggressive look to the front of it. Onto the hood, I really like what they did with the body lines. You have two aggressive lines that kind of get raised and then kind of fade back into the hood. And then you have your two corner lines that go from the front to that rear corner. Let's talk about the Passport. Here it is, 2019, it's back again since 2002, if you could believe that. I really like, especially with the white, it almost has like a Star Wars Stormtrooper type of look to it. And I think that's going to really um, go well with a large segment of the population, especially the younger crowd. You can see that family resemblance with the headlights. I do like the way on the, pilot, uh, on the Passport, you have more gloss black than you have chrome. You have a flat black uh, grill here, design, very unique. It's almost like a chain link look to it. You have very nice materials that are flat that are gonna take a good beating, fog lamps and whatnot. And then across the whole front, I think it was very smart to just keep it simple, nice ABS plastic, and it just really matches well with the front of the vehicle, especially in the white. Now what's interesting is as you go up under the hood, you have your two large corner lines here, and then you have that same line that is very similar to the Pilot that comes up onto the hood area. So very, very nice touch to kind of blend in the family resemblance between these two Hondas. Let's go ahead and check out the side of the Honda Pilot. All right guys, time to check out the side of Honda's largest SUV, we're gonna check out the Honda Pilot. So as we come around the corner, there's that refresh design I was telling you about. As we come into the fender well, you can see how they brought that black, the flat black, all the way around the fender. It has a nice amount of height in between the top of the tire and the inside of that fender. If you're wondering what size wheel this is, this is a 20 inch wheel. I like the gloss black. I like the brushed aluminum, and it seems that Honda has a very uh, unique, unique way of doing their wheels on all their cars where they look very similar and blend in nice. And I like the way that they blacked out certain portions of it 
to give it an, a, a slimmer look to a large wheel, 20 inch wheel. As we continue down the side, the gloss black into the mirror area looks good now. I don't know how it's gonna turn out years from now with this getting you know, hit with rocks and getting car washed and all that kind of stuff, but it does look good with this sparkling white paint. Very nice touch of chrome around the bottom and top of the window, and I also think it's smart how Honda does these wonderful little corner windows just to open up the visibility from behind the wheel of the car. As we go down the side, I like the touches, how they blend in the chrome here. We drop it down, you have the flat black and more chrome that runs along the bottom. That's gonna give you a more cohesive look to the whole package. And then probably one of the smartest things they did was just blacked out this area. Gloss black coming back to the rear quarter window. It almost makes it look like it's one large piece of glass. The rear glass has a nice taste to it. I like the way that the chrome uh, strip here kind of flares out and comes to a point. And really, really nice with that black ABS again with just enough of the chrome. But let's go ahead, since we're talking about the big boy, let's go ahead and talk about the Passport. All right, guys, time to check out. It's back again like we talked about before, the Passport. As we wrap around the front, I do think it's very smart that the housing for the fog lamps and whatnot, they've ended perfect where it should be with just a little bit of white to kind of separate that fender from the front of the car. As we go around that fender, I like the way they bring it all across. This has eight inches of ground clearance on the Passport. There's a beautiful 20 inch wheel. Personally, I would go with a black wheel. I think black with the black grill on the white would even make it look better. But this like gunmetal gray wheel does have a nice balance between the white and the color of the wheel. Honda overall doesn't really have the most exciting wheel designs, except maybe the Type R, but we've already talked about that before. So I would like to see maybe just a, something a little bit extra flare wise, but you know, for this particular car, those wheels, they work 20 inch. They're gonna go round, I promise. As we go down the side, you have black paint on the mirrors, a little bit of, of ABS plastic. I do like this because that's really gonna take a beating better, but uh, I do think it was smart to bring some black onto the mirrors rather than just spill white everywhere. As we go into the greenhouse, you can see that it's no chrome trim. So compared to that Pilot, this isn't gonna have all those chrome extra pieces. When it comes to your roof rails, you can see the nice gloss black Crossbars are already installed, ready for your kayak, ready for your bike, ready for whatever you're gonna do camping. And as we continue down the side, you can see how they have a very nice lower sill area. It's got a nice body line into it that kind of comes out and then fades back in. And I like the way it's just all black ABS plastic. Color match door handles. So those are gonna be some of those differences between the chrome on the Pilot and color matched on this uh, Passport. Another thing with the Passport, you can see how it's a little bit more squarish in this back area with the height of the window. And then as we come to that back corner, I really think it was smart just to have the ABS come around the fender and then into that rear bumper. Speaking of the rear bumper, let's go ahead and check out the backs of both of these Honda SUVs. All right guys, probably one of the biggest, most important things that people take into consideration when looking at an SUV is the back. Now before we open her up, Let's go ahead and take a look at the design work back here. Very, very nice, simple design on the taillights. I like the C shape and I like the way that it comes into the tailgate area. And I think a lot of people would agree it was smart not to bring that other part so that you don't have those lobster claws like you have on the Accord. Very, very tasteful and I'm glad that they kept it body matched to the color with the actual whole vehicle. That white spoiler coming off the back, very nice size rear glass on that the hatchback portion of the SUV. And then down here, I like the way that they brought around that ABS plastic. You got a little bit of faux grill, just a little bit to give it a little bit of taste, a little sprinkling of some salt and pepper. And then across, you have that same silver. And I think that was also smart because it's gonna tie in the front of the car to the rear, little bit of chrome. And if you notice, there's no exhaust to look at. So I think that was probably the best thing to do was just, just take that exhaust, tuck it up in there because it is possible that you're gonna be taking this one down uh, you know, a trail road 
to get to your favorite camping spot. When you go to open it, it's that one touch in the touring. It raises right up on the pilot. And let's see what we're working with. So even with that third row up, pretty good amount of room. You know, you could put a set of golf clubs or something. What I really like is Honda does a great job for storage. So if you can't put it up here, maybe you can fit it back here. Maybe you have something to hide from somebody. Hopefully not keeping secrets because secrets don't make friends. But you also have some nice little cubby areas back here. You have a 12 volt to power up if you're at the beach and you need to inflate that raft for your kids. You don't have to use your lung power. You could use a nice little electric pump. Now when it comes to putting the seats down, I do like this strap design and I'll show you why. When you pull it, one, two, three, one, two, three. So you got a good amount of space. Now you're probably saying, well, Joe, aren't you gonna fold down that second row? If you notice, and I'm gonna have Tom flex his uh, camera skills here, you can see that there's buttons on the rear of the seats to fold those down. So while Tom is showing you that, let me come around and show you. So you're gonna hit this button and then that's going to allow you to move the rear seat as well. It's just one of those things that I wish, I'm gonna zonk it, there's no buttons or anything back here to put the seats down. And that is a huge problem because who wants to have a bunch of stuff in the back and then have to come to the passenger door to move anything with the seats. I don't like that. That's something that definitely needs to change. But once the seats are down, you can see how much room. Now, remember how I told you I like those cloth straps? Let me show you why. When it's time to pull them back up, you're just gonna reach in and grab them nicely and then bring it right back. One, two, three. If there were buttons back here with electric assist, it could take a very, very long time for those seats to come back up. So I'm glad that they did that. Let's go ahead and see what is the Passport all about at the tail end of the business. All right guys, tail end of the business on the new 2019 Passport. You can see how this, just like on the Pilot, no chrome to speak of. Flat black across the middle here, and then you have a large flat black area with twin exhaust. I do like the twin exhaust. I think it looks very tasteful, and I think that's something that they should have put on the Pilot but I just like how clean the back of the uh, Passport is. And I like the way that the back, just like on the Pilot, the back, it matches the front and it's very cohesive. You have a larger, this is a larger roof spoiler coming off the back, color match to the body. So I really like that touch. And I also like the way Hondas are using that shark fin antenna up on the roof rather than something else that's really flimsy. When you go to open, you're so used to it. I'm always so used to on SUVs reaching up here to open the tailgate. No, it's down here. One press of the button. It's a little on the slower side. I better get out of the way or it's gonna hit me. But here is the interior. So the Passport right off the bat is not a three row passenger SUV. Two rows only. You could see as soon as you open though, lots of space, lots of room. You do have a 12 volt back there just like on the Pilot. And then you also have a very smart, very wise little storage area uh, that you can make like a treasure chest for the kids when they're doing good. Then you could open this up and you could have little goodies in there uh, for them to choose from. But if they're not good, then the treasure chest stays locked down and closed. One thing that's different, and I'm surprised I didn't do this on the Pilot, to fold the seats down, it's real easy, one button. So you hit that button and then I'm gonna swing around on this side and. I guarantee you, this side will go down. And you can see the amount of space that is back here in the Pilot. And that's the great thing is, is that even though the Pilot is a little smaller on the outside than, uh, excuse me, the Passport is a little smaller than the Pilot on the outside, you still have tons of room on the inside. But let's go ahead, we talked about the exterior, we talked about the cargo area, let's pop the hoods on these two Honda SUVs. All right, guys, we got the hoods popped on these two 2019 Honda SUVs. Let's start with the Pilot. So like I said, outside and inside has had some refreshing. Under the hood is that still tried and true 3.5 liter V6, 280 horsepower. It's made it to that nine speed automatic transmission. It's got 262 foot pounds of torque. Depending on how you option it with the all-wheel drive or not, remember this is front-wheel drive standard from Honda. You're looking at around 4,100 pounds up to 4,350 pounds. Now the weak link in the chain for the Pilot, it can only tow up to 3,500 pounds. 
MPGs, 18 in the city, 27 on the highway, zero to 60 in six seconds, quarter mile in about 14.6 and a top speed of 115 miles an hour. When we go over to the Passport, there's not gonna be a lot of changes. That is that same 3.5 liter V6 engine, just like in the Pilot. This one has also made it to that nine speed uh, automatic transmission. What's fascinating though, is with the Passport, you're gonna get 20 in the city, 25 on the highway with your MPGs, zero to 60 is a tick quicker at 5.8 seconds. But the biggest part of the news is that the Passport can tow up to 5,000 pounds compared to the Pilot. So as you can see, Honda's very smart, using similar engines, using similar gearboxes to get these two down the road. Let's go ahead and fire them up. guys we're inside the 2019 pilot if you're wondering well Joe what's the MSRP on this particular pilot this one is a touring that is at that TRG option level there is one level higher you're looking at MSRP of around forty three thousand dollars let's see what we get so you go to the door panels one thing you're gonna notice is there's a lot of dark materials you have flat black plastic all over the door panel there's a splash of some gloss plastic near the top i like the way the top of the door panel though is very soft to the touch the back portion is soft the armrest has like a faux leather that actually has a little bit of cush to it is it as soft as some of the other brands no but you do get a plethora of all different slots and places to put your items on the door panel when you come to the dash soft materials there's that nice gloss black bringing, uh, being brought into the dash. You have your infotainment screen. Nice size, navigation, very quick. You can go ahead and navigate around. You can zoom in, very, very easy to use. You do have your volume knob. That's back again for those who want to fine tune that whole um, you know, audio system. You have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, I do like the silver touches and the gloss black. Now I know a lot of you hate the gloss black because it's gonna fingerprint and it's gonna scratch, but it's, it's on the minimum side. As we come down, you can see you have your dual climate control. I like the flat black buttons. These are not gonna scratch, they're gonna stay good. You have a really good looking uh, engine start stop button here that lights up red when the uh, pilot is running. Come down here, you do have um, a CD DVD player here, Blu-ray disc player right there installed. You have heated front seats. Now, uh, you would have to go to the next trim level to get the ventilated seats. So I'm gonna zonk it because I think for $43,000, you and I can both agree, this should be the top trim level and it should have ventilated seats. Very large area, cubby area down here. You have one USB and you have a 12 volt. So that's a really, really nice touch. Here's more of that gloss black. So this is probably where a lot of you are gonna get frustrated that this is gonna get scratched to all high heaven. Push button on the nine speed. What I like about it is that it cleans this whole area out and it is easy to use. I mean, you just push it down to go on the drive. You wanna go back in the park, you press that again, you're back in park. Now here's where it gets a little funky for me. You know me, I'm not a big fan of the captain's chairs, especially when the armrests look like they come from a Barbie Honda Pilot. This is like the, the Barbie edition with that, that kids play with. But I wish this was wider and I wish that it wasn't ratcheting. I don't need to have it set in all different, I mean, do, do people drive like this? I don't know. Maybe you do, but that's cool. Whatever floats your boat. You do have a large open area here and this thing is like open up a, a, a cabinet in a desk. You slide it back, very deep opening, very wide. You have more power sources in there, another 12 volt, another USB. You got a sliding tray here for you know little snacks or whatnot for your longer trips. And then you could close it on up. When it comes to the seats, very nice material, uh, very qu high quality. I like the contrast stitching. Um, I would like to see maybe just a little bit more flair of a design into the seats, but overall, when it comes to support, the most important thing of a seat, these are very supportive. The, 
bottom portion really holds my hamstrings in well. I'm six feet tall. I got lots of headroom, lots of shoulder space. I just, w I don't, I don't like this. This, this just bothers me. What doesn't bother me though, is you got a wonderful sunroof in here. So you have a sunroof over the passenger and the driver. There's nothing going on in the back, but you'll see why, because we have a nice little entertainment system for your passengers. But why don't you come on over to the business end and see where you'll be piloting your pilot. Say that 10 times fast, come on over. All right guys, business time. As you can see, both sides of the pilot up front are full electric assist. You can move this thing every which way that you want to get comfortable because Honda wants you to be comfortable, except for the armrests. I don't know what's up with that. The seat, uh, the seat, the steering wheel. I love the size, I love the shape. There doesn't need to be any glitz and glam. You do have that gloss black here, which I think if you wear a ring, it's gonna scratch the heck out of this. And I don't like these wheel controls. Go drive a Honda Accord. You have the nice thumb wheel. I think that's so much more efficient and just a better way of doing things. When it comes to the dash though, very simple, very straightforward. You have an analog temperature gauge, analog fuel gauge. You have a tachometer that goes across the top. Digital speedo right there in the center. It tells me I'm in park, tells me my door's open. And then you could obviously toggle through different functions on that whole system while you're driving. Little bit of silver around the gauges. It's nice. I mean, is it something that makes me feel, wow, that's really on the higher end of things? No, but it's nice. And the font and the graphics are very well done. The dash is very low and everything is pushed out of the way, which is a great uh, thing. And then I love the way Honda uses the frameless mirrors. I think that's very smart. So you don't have this big bulky thing hanging from the ceiling. But let's go ahead and check out that backseat area because we're in for some surprises. Let's go check it out. All right, guys, that mid-row seat time of the Honda Pilot. I do like what's going on back here. There is a lot of dark black, but I think that's good, especially if you have kids, because God knows they make messes. I like the way the backs of the seats are wrapped in full leather. You have a very large pocket here for an iPad or some books if they read. Please tell me your kids are reading. This is another nice thing. This is smart. Here's a separate pocket for a phone. So instead of dropping the phone in there and falling into the darkness, into the abyss, they can put their phone right there and then run their cords for their earbuds or whatever. Oh, that's, that's right. I'm living in the past. Now we have wireless earbuds and stuff. So sorry about that. But anyways, the back portion of the center console is a nice command center. You have heated seats for that mid row. You have their AC, all the controls. They could plug in their headsets down here. You have that uh, really nice uh, home outlet. You got the two USBs, HDMI jack, which is really great. And the whole reason why they have this command center is as we fly to the top, check out this little sucker right here. They didn't have this in my mom's station wagon. There's your full entertainment setup. You got the Blu-ray DVD up there. You could put in uh, whatever the kids are watching nowadays, I have no idea, but uh, you know, it should be Rady's Rides, but we don't have that on disc yet. But you put that Blu-ray in there, they can watch, be quiet, leave you alone, so that you could just get to your destination with your sanity. Speaking of sanity, you could help that along for your kids in the back, especially if you have like a, a newborn baby, you have these nice extra sh uh, screens to help keep the sun out, which is really nice. And they're easy to use. On the door handles, two cup holders, a little pocket on the bottom, and then you also have a great armrest here. Now, it's a great armrest, but it's not the greatest armrest because first of all, it's a little low. I don't like how low it is. Second of all, why do they put the cup holders in the center? That's where your arm's supposed to go. Cup holders this way. But it is what it is at the end of the day. There's two in the door, so they probably won't even use that. And then remember, to get into the back, you're going to press that button. This flips forward really quick. It probably eject one of your kids right through the front. But uh, it's easy to get into that back seat area. You got cup holders uh, back there. The only thing I'm going to zonk about the back seat area is that um, there's no USB. So this is non-USB land. You're going to have to stay in the middle if you want your USB. But what I love about these pilots, slide. I love these sliding seats. I mean, Tom, before we started filming, he strapped weights to this whole thing and was just doing some uh, leg, leg extensions and stuff, so leg presses. But, uh, you know, I think it's one of those things that 
hey, if you want to use it for a workout or if you want to be comfortable, you could go either way. But let's go ahead. We've seen the whole interior of this Pilot. Let's go check out that Passport. All right, guys, we're in the 2019 Honda Pilot. Before we go any further to keep this comparison real neat and tidy, this one MSRPs for about $41,000. It is that touring, that TRG. When you look at the window sticker, TRG, that touring level. There is one extra hire you could go, but let's see what we get for the money in the Passport. Let's go to the door panels. Very similar. It almost looks like the door panel was taken right out of the Pilot and put in the Passport. You have that same all black look with the nice soft materials at the top of the door, on the armrest, the back portion of the door, lots of little pockets, two levels there to put whatever you want in those little spots. As we transition from the door to the dash, there's that gloss black, just like on the Pilot here in the Passport. I like how far the dash is out in front of me and how flat it is. Very nice infotainment. Remember, this is an eight inch uh, infotainment system. Very great font, very uh, clear graphics. Great in to get into the um, actual navigation portion of this whole setup of the infotainment unit. As we transition down, it's that, it almost feel like I'm in the Pilot, to be honest with you. That same gloss black. I like the use of the flat black on the buttons so that they don't get all messed up. That same exact, I don't know if, if you see a reoccurring thing here, the same. There's a lot of what's going on in the Pilot here. Now, this, as many of you have told me, is a slot for that DVD player, uh, CD player system in here. So this one does not have an option, but you can get it. Same little cubby area, power outlets, everything is looking good, just like in the Pilot. And of course, you're also gonna have that push button system to power that nine speed automatic transmission. This is probably gonna kill all of you right now. You're probably like, stop touching it, stop touching it, fingerprints. Yes, the FBI will not have to fingerprint you. They could get it just from the center console here. Speaking of the center console, we got the captain chairs. I'm not gonna repeat myself, even though I feel like I already am, but that's what we have. And then you have very large area I mean, this is, it's almost like a carbon copy, just in a different wrapper. It's like getting a piece of, of uh, big red. You could get it in the long, thin slices, or you could get in the smaller pieces. It's the same slice of gum, even though it's a different shape. Seats, I do like these seats better. And the reason why is I like the style to them. There's a nice crisscross pattern going on in the design. They're perforated, um, same wonderful soft black leather. And they're also that same supportive feeling, which is great. You get a nice sunroof over the driver and the passenger, nothing for the passengers in the back. But why don't you come on over here and I'll show you the business end and see what you're gonna be doing behind the wheel of your passport. All right guys, here we are, business end. Now I like the, the, the difference in the steering wheel from the Pilot. I like the way they use some different materials, especially on the side, the perforated uh, sides of it. There's a little bit of gloss black, but there's still those same buttons I'd rather have thumb wheels. I know I'm probably being picky, but we're gonna zonk this area, especially the gloss black, because you have rings, this thing is gonna get all scratched to high heaven. Same exact dash setup. So if you think you're gonna see something different inside the Passport, it's been brought over from the Pilot. You have that digital center display, tachometer, speedometer, gear indicator, and then you have your analog setup flanking each side with a little bit of silver. I just wish there was some other material that they could have used to add a little pizzazz to that, especially because you're looking at it. But the fonts, like I said in the pilot, fonts, the font, the color and everything is great. You got power assisted seats, electric assisted seats, obviously, and that same sunroof that we mentioned earlier. So let's go ahead and check out the back seat area. All right, guys, back seat time of the 2019 Passport. You're not gonna believe this. I know this is probably gonna shock you. Very similar to the Pilot. Seats, very comfortable, lots of headroom back here. You can see that when it comes to the pattern, they brought the front into the back. I like the design better than what's in the Pilot. You have the same great um, map pocket, also that cell phone pocket here. Very, very smart. Here's our command center. So if you notice, this one doesn't have the DVD player, so you don't have to worry about that but you do have all the same power sources, just like in the Passport, and the same rear AC, which is really, really nice. Overall, great use. When it comes to the seats, you've got your sliding 
Also, you have your reclining. So that's a great thing to have in this class of SUV. But why don't we, you know, this has been enough about inside, outside, this, that, and everything else. Let's take these two for a spin and see how they drive. All right, guys, we're leaving Tampa Honda. We're in the 2019 Honda Pilot. What's really wonderful, I noticed off the bat, is the great visibility. Like I was pointing out earlier, those corner windows in the front door glass really helps with visibility. Just, you would think that how can those small little windows do anything? It really just allows you to be able to see a lot easier. Even out the back window, during going all the way back to that third row with the large glass, visibility is good. Side mirrors are a great size and um, overall just feel really in command of this pilot. I like the fit and finishes where I'm touching. Um, you know, now that I'm driving it a little bit, the captain's chair isn't too bad. I just wish it was a little wider and I wish it wasn't ratcheting, uh, like I mentioned earlier. Um, nine speed automatic, we got that uh, V6 underneath the hood. I'm gonna go ahead and get on it. Drops down and starts to pull. So very interesting how that nine speed reacts. Let me show you again. getting some wheel chirp all that power going to the 280 horsepower going to those front wheels is actually um, creating a little bit of wheel spin from a very slow roll and remember that is quite impressive in a vehicle that weighs 4100 pounds you can get the pilot with all-wheel drive but this one does not have that option I do like the infotainment screen Great size, really easy to navigate through. AC controls are great. Everything really is exactly where you think it's gonna be. Um, the center display with uh, all the digital readouts and everything, very clear to understand. And you could toggle through, like I was telling you about, all different types of functions, whether you're looking at your fuel range, um, all different types of functionality to this Honda Pilot. It does come with the full suite of safety features that Honda has been developing, lane keep assist and uh, adaptive cruise control and all that. So that's really um, wonderful to keep your family safe. And then you also do have this econ mode that you could go into. Now that's not econ as in 12th grade economics class, but it's gonna help you um, really get maximum MPGs in this remember in the city you're looking at 18 miles per gallon in this full size suv i really think probably one of the night the things that i like most about this honda pilot is just the overall the fit and finish and where the placement of everything is very easy to navigate through the infotainment system which is very uh, nice to see because sometimes infotainment systems can be so complicated in the cars that we drive nowadays. And another thing is just overall, I could feel if I had a ton of kids in this thing, that they would be preoccupied. I would have a movie playing for them. They'd be in the bag, not bothering me, not busting my chops. And I would be able to just enjoy the drive of wherever we're going for that family vacation or whatnot. But I think Honda definitely needs to take some of the material that's in these armrests and put it in some of their other vehicles in their lineup because the armrests are very comfortable, seating position is great, and the feedback from the front end of the SUV is very good as well. But we're gonna go ahead and swap cars, get into the uh, Passport and see how that one drives. We'll be back in one second. Hey guys, we're in the 2019 Honda Passport. We're leaving Tampa Honda. It is really mind-blowing how similar the interior is on the Passport compared to the Pilot. I mean, it's almost like spot on the same. Now, what's interesting is that Passport exterior wise is a little bit smaller, but yet you still feel right at home, just like in the Pilot. And uh, even out that rear glass, the visibility is really, really good. Out the windshield, things are looking great. And the side mirrors work really well, just like the Pilot. It's interesting because it's, I think for many people, it's just gonna come down to, um, if you like the look of both, 
do you need that extra row capability? That's the big question. But definitely in this pilot, it, it uh, excuse me, in the Passport, it is so smooth and uh, I think even more so visibility is great out the front because of how the hood is shaped compared to the hood on the Pilot. All right guys, from this stoplight, let me go ahead and get on the gas. That V6, 280 horsepower, that slick shifting, nine speed automatic transmission. Remember that's a ZF automatic transmission. It's made by that German company ZF. Very quick shifting, very quick reacting. It really does get up and go. Um, remember, Passport, a little quicker, zero to 60, 5.8 seconds, brakes feel great, steering wheel um, feels great, uh, the feedback that you're getting from the front of the vehicle, and you can also get this in all-wheel drive as well. But uh, everywhere you look, you, you have a nice touch, a nice feel. I think probably the biggest gripe that a lot of people are gonna have is just this area where uh, the shifting takes place. All that gloss black does get a little filled with fingerprints and whatnot, but other than that, I mean, center console area has got a lot of room. Um, and if you don't mind the captain shares, then you're gonna love sitting behind the wheel. I love the shape, I love the style, and uh, I just love how smooth and quiet this passport is. Right, guys, it's been a wonderful day here at Tampa Honda. Definitely gotta give a huge shout out and a thank you to Christian and everybody here at the dealership. If these are the types of comparisons that you like to see on Randy's Rides, leave a comment in that comment section. If you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, click that subscribe button. I promise you, you're gonna to wanna to come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you. Thank you for being part of the Radies Rides family. Check out all my different forms of social media. You know what they're called. It's all Radies Rides original content all the time. If you want some merch, click that link in the description. It takes you right to Spreadshirt. And then we gotta acknowledge, we gotta throw it out there. We gotta promote it. Big Guns McGee, Tom Moshner, working his camera skills, has created a new Instagram page to showcase his photo taking capabilities. It's called Mosh Photos. I'm gonna leave that right here in the video. Go to Instagram and definitely follow him on his journey of capturing life, love, harmony, and balance. But thank you, Tom, for all your hard work. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.